Heart surrender is the needle to the balloon of covetousness. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey. This is part number two of our five-part series. In our effort to beware of covetousness, we're going to look at the heart of Judas and recognize that while he had what we all have, the choice that he made and the choice that we do not want to make. And that's easy, but that choice begins in the heart. You know, when you see the story of Judas, it's always painted in its negative light because that's truly what it is. It's a tragedy that somebody could be around so much light. In fact, the light of the world, but still end up in darkness. It's not about how you start, friend. It's about how we finish. And Judas shows us where we don't want to be. That's why we're using him in our attempt to beware of covetousness. When the story is recorded of his ultimate betrayal, of Christ. It's amazing the language that is used and to see where the enemy worked, where the enemy was seated to move him to this place where he could literally rationalize betraying and selling out Jesus Christ. It's there in Luke in chapter 22 verses 3 through 5 that then Satan entered into Judas surnamed Iscariot being of the number of the 12. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray Jesus unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. The issue was not necessarily money. The fruit, the reward for his issue was money. But notice how the Bible says that Satan enters into him. Now in another verse, That location, that place, John says, 13, verse number two, and supper being ended, the devil, here he's called the devil, who was Satan in Luke 22, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. This is why the issue of money or the issue of greed in any one of its forms whether it's financial, whether it's in our lifestyles, whether it's in how we treat people, any type of excess at the sake or at the sacrifice of other people, like in Judas's case, it's an issue of the heart. How it's manifest is just, it's the color of the weed, but the root of that weed is in our heart. And this is why in order for us to experience any type of victory, to be, to be, to be able to break free, or I should say be broken free, from these changes of greed, we've got to yield that heart. We have to give that to God and ask him and say, I can't fix this thing. You are the only one who can deal with it. When we understand or study this issue of greed, the Bible is very clear to show us that, look, your issue is inside. There's a bondage. There are chains that aren't on your hands. They aren't on your wallet. That's just where they're manifested. Peter even counsels us. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19, he warns us and says, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. This corruption manifested here of whom a man is overcome of the same he is brought in bondage. Judas was overcome by his greed. And because he was overcome by his greed, he was a slave to that greed. And all the devil had to do was yank those chains. And because of that, he was able to get him to a place where he could use him as his human agent for his hellish plan. And that was to destroy what he thought, the work and the stop, the gospel of God and Jesus Christ, his son. You know, when we look at this story, I hope that Judas, we can at least take something from this mess and allow God to turn it into a message to show us that the only way Judas would have made it was if he had surrendered or yielded his heart to Christ. And even though Judas had been in school for three and a half years, learning of Christ, what Christ taught and what Christ offered had never entered, never rested in the Judas because he never gave his heart to him.